the other day I was walking around the mall and I went into a GameStop just to kind of look at what they had. And one of the things that I noticed is that they actually had this random Yu-Gi-Oh! Legendary Decks 2 on their shelf. Now, if you don't know about this, these things used to cost a lot of money. Currently on eBay, there are multiple listings for around $60 or more. And it was sitting on the shelf for 30 bucks, the regular retail price. So I figured I might as well buy one. Now, I don't know if this has been a re-release. I know we just did the video talking about the Dark World Structure Deck re-release. This is something I'm not entirely sure of. None of my locals have this, so I don't think it actually is going out to all the local stores. Maybe it's just a retail re-release. I'm not entirely sure. I think more likely than not, this was just sitting in their back and then they just put it out on the shelf, not really realizing how expensive it was. But what was funny is that almost as soon as I bought this thing, I went to the food court and I was just sitting there and someone came up to me and said, hey, where did you buy that? I want to get one of those. Clearly, they also knew the value of these things. Now, on eBay, these things are still pretty expensive. Um, someone on Twitter, though, pointed out that on Amazon, they're not too expensive, which uh, leads me to believe that maybe uh, a handful of these have made it out into the public once again. But this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Legendary Dex 2. This is three years old. This came out in October of 2016, and this really isn't how we know Legendary Dex recently, because uh, the first two Legendary Dex were almost exclusive, like, nostalgia bait. It just has a lot of Yu-Gi and Kaiba and Joey stuff, and I think the first one was all exclusively Yu-Gi. Uh, cards and then after that it moves into a more competitive product we have the uh, the legendary dragon decks that had uh, three very competitive decks and then we see the legendary hero decks which was the most recent one and that one also has a ton of competitive cards this one is somewhere in the middle but I think mostly this this one just like the original one is just nostalgic cards but we'll kind of go through here and I think this is a pretty unique product so I thought it'd be fun to open and I just couldn't pass it up just because I know how much this thing is worth so I, I felt like I, I had to buy it also worth noting I guess is that this thing uh, you can see it has like the gold sarcophagus box and uh, that's kind of funny because the uh, Megatons that are coming out are gonna have a little more uh, Well put together gold sarcophagus cause that's gonna be a tin instead of just cardboard But I don't know I see a lot of people carrying these around every once in a while You can't really carry your decks in here, but it's not the worst product I would say for carrying around just like your comments and stuff I have a couple uh, longer boxes that I carry commons around and when I sell bulk But this is something that's not quite a super small box, but it is kind of cool. It has like the gold sarcophagus I just thought it'd be kind of cool to look through here. Uh, this is sort of like an random as aside that I don't think anyone will really care about, but the legendary decks in particular are excellent for card artworks or card uh, pictures that I use in videos. Uh, definitely the highest quality pictures that I ever am able to find are from the legendary decks. Uh, I don't know if this because a lot of the cards are common or, or what, but these have a lot of really good scans. So we can see here we have a uh, Kaiba's deck, which can be blue eyes cards. We have Yugi's deck, which is going to have god cards in it. Woohoo. And then the red eyes deck, which is Joey's deck. And we have some promo cards as well. We have a dark burning attack. You control a dark nation girl monster. Destroy all face up monsters your opponent controls. Wow. It's a regeki with a requirement in a format where people aren't playing regeki. How crazy is that? And then we, let's see what else we got here. We have Dark Burning Magic. If you control monsters whose original names are Dark Nation and Dark Nation Girl, destroy cards your opponent controls. Okay, a little bit better. And then we have a Seeker Rare Eternal Soul. This was not the... Was this the first release for Eternal Soul? I can't even remember. So I always <laughs> pull these cards and it's like, oh, I don't know. Just because uh, I have I've have a pretty good log of like all the competitive cards that have come out. But in terms of like more casual cards, like Dark Nation cards, yeah, I don't really have a good uh, timeline of when the cards were releasing. We'll take a look at... Yugi's deck here and see what's going on and this is one of the uh, the first places that reprinted a lot of the uh, blue eyes cards We'll kind of go through there probably the, after the Yugi's deck um, I remember that it didn't reprint alternative. I'm not even sure if alternative was out at this point Well October 2016 yeah, it would have been out um, but it did reprint a lot of the other cards, which is pretty cool so we have the almighty Slifer the Sky Dragon and oh Obelisk the Tormentor Broken and the Wing Dragon of Ra. You know, the three best cards in the game. And this one also has the Exodia supports. So we have the legendary Exodia Incarnate. And a lot of people uh, have asked me why I do not mention Exodia or, or Exodia Incarnate. Or that's a strategy in my Exodia video. I've made a couple of them. Uh, it's just not very good. I mean, it's not like the worst thing in the world, but I don't think it's worth talking about. Ties of Brethren. 
I believe this was the first release of this card. I think it was like the main competitive release out of this set. And uh, this card never really saw a ton of play. It was very good in Magic Specters. It was very good in Counter Fairies, I guess, recently. Um, other than that, though, I mean, there were some cool applications for this card, but as I think a lot of people were underwhelmed by Ties of Brethren and competitive uh, landscape, which is kind of weird because, uh, yeah, in Magic Specters, it was pretty broken. You would uh, summon a Magic Specter, search a guy, and then Ties of Brethren, summon two more, and then search two more cards. It makes like a plus three, pretty insane. And we have Obliterate, which was another one, one of the Exodia cards. So those are the six holographic cards from there. And then the first legendary deck, which I don't have, and I don't think I'll ever buy it because those are super expensive, unless I just happen to fall uh, into one. But the first legendary decks are insanely expensive. Like those ones are over $100. They definitely have not had a re release. But this one, no, not so much, like $60 to $70. So we have uh, all five of the Exodia pieces. So you can Exodia obliterate your opponents. Pretty crazy. We got Exodia Necros. Dark Condition, of course. We got the OG artwork. I like that one a lot. Dark Magician Girl, Buster Blader, Silent Magician Level 8, shout out to Silent Magicians, my favorite, uh, one of your archetypes in Duel Links at level 4 as well. Obviously no uh, real Silent Magician, which the real Silent Magician, or I guess the normal one that doesn't have a level, is uh, quite expensive in the TCG. It's like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, that's by the fact that it's literally never been played in anything. And then we have uh, the Tricky, Big Shield Gardna, Magician's Valkyrie. Blast Magician, cool looking guy. Block Man, oh man, I used to like this card a lot. He was printed as a secret rare back in the day, not in a main set. I think he was part of a special edition, and he was really cool. Marshmallow, oh man, the Marshmallow is actually pretty funny. In all of the uh, the starter decks that they've released in the past couple of years, a lot of them have Marshmallow, and uh, it's actually really hard to out that card in the starter deck uh, formats. If you ever play in like a side event with starter decks, there's only like three real outs to Marshmallow. So I see a lot of people incorrect. Uh, no one cares about starter deck format, but I see a lot of people incorrectly link away or exceeds away their marshmallows when in reality you should just leave it on the board because it's almost not impossible to out unless your opponent especially if your opponent has used like their fiendish chain it's really hard for them to actually deal with it and then we got sangin which does in fact have the new text that makes it a lot worse and we have a uh, gold sarcophagus which is currently limited but it's cool if they include it in here because the box is gold sarcophagus but uh, that card is currently limited so just keep a note of that swords of revealing light magical dimension magicians unite tricky spell number four thousand knives dark magic attack con contract with exodia messenger of peace that's kind of i guess it goes with like the stalling exodia strategy Dark Factory of Mass Production to get, those, to get back exactly Dark Condition and the Exodia pieces for some reason. Monster Reincarnation. Secret Village of Spellcasters. Pretty cool reprint. Uh, was this the first non-hollow reprint of it? Because it has, it currently has two super rare printings, and I think this might be the only common printing, unless it was, uh, probably was in the recent Magician deck. But other than that, I think, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, because they had a, their own field spell. I don't know, I'm pretty sure this is the only common reprint of Secret Village, but I'm not totally sure. We have Pot of Duality. You notice here that it's missing a lot of the cards. Um, and the other one, it, it definitely was the uh, the Legendary Dragon decks or something, where it had uh, all, almost all of the Dark Magician cards in there, like the Magician, like the the fields or the Searcher card, all of the like the normal summons. So this one is much more focused on Exodia, not so much Dark Magician. We have Mirror Force, Magical Hat, so Magic Cylinder broken, Magician Circle, Backup Soldier. Gravity Bind, and then each uh, deck has a token, which is kind of cool. I believe I already have the Kaiba one, just in general, but here is the Yugi one. So we have Yugi and Dark Condition there. Kind of interesting that the Dark Condition in this artwork is not the Dark Condition that is in the uh, actual deck itself. So that's it for the Yugi uh, portion of this. And once again, these, these structure decks or these legendary decks, whatever you call them, are usually pretty good values. You're getting $30, you're getting three different decks, and especially with the, the last two releases, you actually are getting some pretty competitive cards. The last one in particular had uh, all those Odd Eyes cards and all those Pendulum cards and also had a complete Cyber Dragon deck, which is pretty cool. So for Joey's, we have the Blackstone of Legend, Return of the Red Eyes, Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, really cool card. Actually, a really good uh, rank seven Xyz monster that did see play in a variety of decks. And every once in a while, you can just burn your opponent out of the game. It's sort of like the uh, the OG Trickstar monster. Uh, 500 damage is a lot, so that's really cool. You can just summon it, and if your opponent only has like 1,500 life points or 2,000 life points, a lot of times they just can't deal with it without taking all of their life. So we have uh, Red Eyes Bee Dragon, Red Eyes Black Flare Dragon, Red Eyes Archfiend of Lightning, Red Eyes Retro Dragon black metal dragon they're all, they're all like exactly the same name it's funny uh axe raider alligator sword baby dragon it's gonna have some fusion monsters that'd be pretty exciting and i see we got alligator sword and baby dragon that makes a fusion monster right uh jinzo oh man goblin attack force 
Gear Feed the Iron Knight. So you can see this one isn't so much designed to be like competitive. We just have a lot of like more casual cards. Time Wizard, that's kind of cool. Um, and it's not that these are just like useless cards. Like there certainly are some decent cards out of here. And a lot of these reprints were pretty good back in the day. But realistically, these ones, these first two legendary decks, uh, weren't really designed to be super competitive. And that's kind of why I'm just going through this really fast. We got Red Eyes Fusion, um, which Duel Links players might think is broken, but it's actually not a very good card in the TCG. Despite the fact that we have even more cards that you can send and summon with this it's not very good cards of the red stone that's a pretty good card palmerization salamandra fun fact if you didn't know the salamangrates are all based on this card this is where it comes from so if you're not playing this card in your salamangrate deck you're not truly dedicated to the archetype i think a lot of people don't realize they're like why is it called salamangrates they're not even salamanders it's because of this card so that's where they come from scapegoat foolish barrel so we got some good cards roulette spider is that was that a real card before this i don't even know supervise mst classic symbols of duty red eyes spirit kunai would chain call the haunted torrential trivia that's a pretty good card burst breath i gotta do my obligatory battle pack three shout out someone mentioned that uh <laughs> i always say that every card from battle pack three is good but that's the cool thing about battle pack three for me. i mean i made a video about it but all the cards in battle pack three for the most part are playable there's like 200 cards in the set and like five of them are bad and so that's pretty cool burst breath pretty cool underrated battle pack three cards so if you're ever playing battle pack three you know the battle pack three card for chris van nubis i'll stop talking about battle pack three now uh archfiend black skull dragon alligator sword dragon nice and the token which uh once again has the not the same um artwork of the actual token or of the actual red eyes b dragon that was included in here that's pretty funny i don't know why they chose to do that it is kind of interesting this one had did i miss hollows no i didn't this one just had less hollows than the other one. It only had uh, four if we count the token. This one had seven counting token. Insane. Okay. So let's look at this uh, one. And I'll kind of go through here and tell you which of the Blue Eyes reprints I remember mattering. Because the Blue Eyes cards, despite the fact it wasn't the best deck around this time. I mean, I guess when this was released, it had just won Worlds. But in general, for a while, the Blue Eyes cards were just really expensive, despite not really topping anything until they got alternative. Um, so we have Maiden with Eyes of Blue. Melody of the Awakening Dragon, very important reprint, it was only printed at this point as a super rare, and it was extremely, extremely expensive. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon was uh, not one of the cards that uh, really mattered getting reprinted, but it's still kind of cool. And we have Blue Eyes White Dragon, we don't have, oh, we do have the artwork that I like. Oh, they put three different artwork, that's actually really cool. They didn't do that with Dark Nation of Red Eyes, but I guess they don't really need that, but if, if you're going to put Blue Eyes Ultimate, you need three different copies. So Dragon Spirit of White, this was the first reprint of this card. This card was pretty expensive, it was only an ultra rare. Kaiba Man, pretty cool. The White Stone of Legend. White Stone of Ancients, this is the first reprint of this card, only printed as Ultra Rare, very expensive. And even after this, it kind of did remain expensive. I believe this one does not have Sage. That was like the big thing that was missing from this was, was Sage, because obviously they're not going to put Alternative in here, but I'm pretty sure they could have put Sage in here. We got those cards. Battle Ox, Lajin, the Mystical Genie of the Light. Vorse Raider, Alexander Dane. This has some good normal monsters. Blade Knight. Ancient Lamp and Tiger Dragon. Komodo, Kidmodo Dragon. That's actually like a pretty good card. Uh, this card used to be talked about in the, the 2013, late 2013 version of Dragon Lords. People were sometimes playing this card because you could send it to the graveyard with a ravine and special summon a guy from your hand. And King of Swamp. Rider of the Storm. <laughs> it's one of terrible card. That's for the monster cards. And we have, I'm sure we have lots of cool blue eyes themed spells and traps. Burst Stream of Destruction. Beacon of White. There he is. Blue Eyes White Dragon. Mausoleum of White. Palmarization again. Enemy Controller. Fantastic card. Really good card. Not a great reprint because by this time it re reprinted so many times, but still a decent card to include. We have Shrink, Silent Doom, Ancient Rules. Of course, Ancient Rules has to go in these decks. Trade In. That's a good card as well. Where Arf Thou. Pot of Dichotomy. Really weird seeing these pot cards in common after they were secret rares. <laughs> I remember seeing Desires as a common. It was just very strange. Fusion Stuff. Dude, hey, we just talked about this in a video. This seems really bad for this deck. I don't know how you're ever summoning three blue eyes and then activating Fusion Stuff. Dude, but it's a really good card in general. Unexpected Die. That's it for the spells. Are all, it seems like all of these are like 20 monsters, 10 spells. Or, yeah, 20 monsters, 10 spells, 10 traps. They're really close to that. Uh, Negate Attack. Final Attack Orders, Shadow Spell, Poor Man's Fiendish Chain, uh, Cloning, 
Fusion Reserve, Jar of Avarice. Man, that's once again really weird. So what Fusion Monsters does it have here? It has, oh, First of the Dragon. Oh my gosh, this would be awful to play against your friends and just have them summon First of the Dragons. I thought this one was like the worst one. I mean, it doesn't have like a lot of win. I guess none of these are meant to be competitive, but this card would be really annoying to summon in like a friendly matchup, First of the Dragons. If you guys don't know what this card does, it says, uh, must first be Fusion Summon and counter special my other ways. So you uh, can only control one First of Dragons. This card can counter destroy a battle except for the battle with normal monster and is unaffected by other monsters effects so if you need like a spell or trap to actually get rid of this thing that'd be super annoying in a casual matchup and then we have the token here although in this case uh, because we have multiple blue eyes artworks it's actually featured in this token the correct artwork so that's it for the legendary decks too and like i said this is um, obviously not a, more, a very competitive one but it's still pretty cool to look at this is before they sort of shifted the focus of these i believe that the legendary decks one and two were extremely popular extremely successful Konami really did like them and uh, they're pretty good value as well I don't think we're getting them this year because we're getting that uh, single set that Konami is doing like you get 50 guaranteed cards and they're all like good side deck cards or good extra deck options I'll talk about that later when that comes out but uh, I think that's taking the spot of the legendary decks for this year but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video I'll see you in the next one goodbye